So in this video, we're going to talk about the visibility graphics. Shortcut key is VG. Suppose you are in a project template. You just open this one is a Revit architecture template. So when you press VG on your keyboard, the dialog box will get open like this one. And you have uh, some of the settings which is inside. So today the main focus is all about the uh, modeling categories, the annotation categories, import categories, and filters. So we're going to talk about that. And the most important thing is the filters. It is really widely used when you're working in the BIM projects and how it's going to be helpful for you for your work. So let's talk about first the modeling categories. So you can see that you you see here the filter list as well. So basically this showing multiple, it means all the disciplines are included here. But if you check this box, you'll see this architecture, structure, mechanical, electrical, plumbing, infrastructure. These are all tabs gets open. Suppose you just wanted to see an architectural component, so you can actually uncheck this one. So the only the it will filter out the architectural components here. And we can actually do the settings accordingly. So for better understanding, let's do one thing. Let's just simply create a wall, press WA on the keyboard, and basically let's uh, go here and let's add some of the structural wall or beam or anything like that. So just for, so let me put this on start elevation, six feet and six feet like this. I think it will be visible. As you can see that it's now visible. Let's put it in fine. You can see here's a beam and let's put on shade. I put this on a line here. So here is the architecture wall and here is a structural element. So basically when I press VG on the keyboard, so let me put this a little bit on the side so you can see that. So here, if I go here in the, basically this is a structural frame. So if I go here and press S, so it will find you the names come up in that. So if I go here, structural framing and you can see that all is up showing up here so this comes under structural framing if i uncheck this one and apply you'll see that structural framing disappeared so when i wanted to actually hide this one it's just like you want you're working on project and you're just using this filter you can sorting out while working on the big projects to you know just avoid the clashes so suppose now I want to change some setting in the wall so I can actually uncheck this wall to in the visibility so it will disappear like this. And if I check back, it will come back again. So it works like that. It's like a, you have a sort of filtering here. So basically, these are the lids. Actually, you can sort it out according to you. If you want to actually work on the structural, you can actually do like that and you can find out which element you wanted to see or not. Suppose if you have, a, if you go on a site, if I just hide this one, and if I just create a masking inside and go here into topo surface, I just create a topo surface like this one, and I click OK. Now we have topo surface here and a shade. Now if I press VG, I just wanted to hide topo surface. I don't want to see that in a project. Right? For currently, I press like T. I'll find this topo topography, and apply and it will get disappear in the project, but still it's in the project. So you can come back and press VG and then try to find this by pressing T on the keyboard, find topography, it will come back like this. Now let's talk about other elements as well. So let's press VG again. And here are the annotation categories. The same way you can actually hide the annotation, basically, uh, you can actually control the visibility of annotations as well if you want to see in the project according to you. So if it is like you want to have a half tone, so it will come up like in a little bit grayish color like that. So if I just, uh, just let me uh, delete this one for now. If I press TG and I take this wall, I think I need to load that. I don't have it. So let's go here on the level one and press TG and find this. So it's showing up here the question mark because there is no uh, mark given. The type mark is like that. So press like any of the number. Let's, let's give or maybe WA like that. So it's now showing WA12B. So now if I go back here on the visibility graphic, press VG on the keyboard. So actually in the annotation category, I can find that the wall tags here. And if I check this box half tone, 
it will come so you can see that it's showing another little bit in grayish color so according to a project you can actually modify up to you so there are so many settings inside you can actually change that now the thing is actually the import categories so basically whatever the elements or whatever the file you have imported in this uh, template it will show up here like any of the families or anything up like that it will show up here in this category so suppose it's showing here input in families so that's why it's showing up here and you can do like that and uh, if i just import here if i go here maybe link get file so suppose uh, let me just add any of the cat file just this one just for example so now it's showing up here let's press vg and if i go in the import category you can see that the t1 the twg file is now imported here as you can see that and if i uncheck this one it will get disappear so you can control that as well from here so that's the power of using the visibility graphics now let's talk about the most important topic filters so let me just uh, delete some of this element let's create simple walls and i'll just do one thing i'll just increase this width uh, sorry the thickness and i'll just put this like this one and i just copy this one multiple times it's uh same same type of wall i'm doing here like suppose we have a three types of wall but with the same category and it's a 12 inches generic wall as you can see that here now the thing is actually we want to have like using how to use the filters suppose you wanted to have this wall as in a red color this one i have in green color or this one is some different color so you can actually use that uh, through filter so basically you can press vg again go to the filter now we are going to basically add a new filter category here so you have to add here and you can go and edit new and now this window will pop up suppose you have three walls so what i do actually i'll just simply go here in new i'll give this w1 as a just a notion or like a wall one or something like that i'll select this one i'll go here in the category check this box and then go here and basically whatever the top this uh, maybe the thing is actually it works like the filtering rules so whatever the identity data you wanted to actually filter out you can use that suppose we have a type mark here so uh, if i go here type mark equals to like suppose here's one so i'll just put it one like this and apply okay so now i go again back i'll just paste it up w2 go here again wall check this box go here again type mark equals to two uh, slowly you will understand why i'm doing this one and you will get the point so number that's the last one is number three wall three go here wall check this box use the type mark or whatever the identification data through you wanted to actually categorize or filter out the thing so i'm using this uh, actually equals to because I am saying that whatever the wall the type mark is having equals to number three which turns which is going to be turned into different colors that's what I'm trying to do here so it's kind of a filter I'm using so let me show you how it works actually so let me now add it I just press shift and add all of it click OK you'll add here and just for now click OK I'll show you what I was doing in that integration data so here you can see that the type mark in the identification data so identity data you i'm using this uh, identification this identity data as a filtration tool so that we can utilize uh, to sort it out in a filtration so now let's press back vg and uh, in the filters now you can see that num w1 w2 w3 so i want that uh here in the pattern I'll just go here and add a solid surface i'll put this one red okay w2 i want to have a green color so i put this on solid put this on green like this one w3 i will add some different color so let's go on solid maybe imagine our pink or something or anything like this one okay so and i click apply so once you remember this one i i what i did actually i actually 
uh, if I show you here, I actually put this one ball one on equals to one. I put this one equals to two. I put this one equals to three. So now I click OK, apply OK, OK. So I go here. I just go here simply, edit this type mark to one. Apply. You can see that it's not showing up here. Because why it all turns into the red color? Because we didn't duplicate it. So now we have to go here and duplicate this one, the wall. Suppose this is like uh, the W2 for identification, W2. I'll put this W is here number two type mark as a filter we used. You can see that now it's changes color. So that's actually the power of using filters. And this is really important while you're working with the BIM projects. I'll put this one like I'll duplicate this one. I'll put this one like uh, number three. And I'll put this on time mark number three. So we'll find out it's now in a different color. So this is actually we are controlling through that using this filters and we are assigning and saying that whatever the type mark which is equals to one which goes to red whatever the type mark which is equal to two will turns to green whatever the type mark uh, number three equals to three will turn into magenta or whatever color you want so this is how you use filters just i show you for the wall you can use for doors or any of the elements you can categorize through. It is really beneficial for your BIM projects to actually understand. Suppose you have an interior wall, exterior wall, you can easily categorize through that. And this is really an, a great tool basically for your BIM projects.